Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to Centered Moments channel. I'm Jolima and in this video I want to talk about my current favorite perfume brands uh, slash houses, designers and niche and I will be ranking my current top seven. Uh, now, I, while I'll, I will be talking about these fragrance houses, I will also mention some of my favorite uh, perfumes and and I will talk about them in a specific order. So with that being said, let's talk about these fantastic fragrance houses, uh, fragrance brands. Now in the number seven spot is a fragrance house uh, called Ramon Monegal, based in Barcelona, Spain. Um, this house is very underrated. So Ramon Monegal is the parfumeur, he is a maître parfumeur and he has amazing fragrances and it's again very underrated uh, maybe because of distribution uh, issues but not a lot of people talk about uh, this house uh, my one of my absolute favorite fragrances from Ramon Morial is Soul of Oud which is also my favorite Oud fragrance it's from the collection Don't Touch My Oud I have two more, Alhambra Oud and Ocean Oud. There's another one that I would love to have, which is Oud on Fire, a very smoky, barbecue-ish Oud. Uh, this is a pure, natural, sweet Oud. Absolutely love it. Um, and Ramon Monreal fragrances are very unique. Oh, so good. They are very unique. They are not overpriced in my opinion uh, they go from the normal they from their um, normal range um, it's I mean the prices go between 160 to 180 uh, retail for 50 ml and then you have the 100 ml which is of course will be more expensive but actually 50 ml it's all you need for example another fragrance that I absolutely love from this house is Mont Patchouli one of the most unique patchouli fragrances that I have. This is a green patchouli with salty aquatic natures and a fruity tone. It's patchouli for summer and fall. This is actually a very nice end of summer type of scent. I love it. Absolutely love this fragrance. Um, then you have another one which I already did the review. I think Mumpuchuli I also did a review of. And this one also, I mean, fantastic. It's Faiza. Faiza is so complex, so powerful and rich and sweet. Oh, it's so good and so sexy. Uh, Faiza as oud it has raspberry rose jasmine uh osmanthus heavy dose of osmanthus with mimosa absolutely stunning scent uh but this fragrance is not for the faint of heart because it's very powerful it's one of my most long lasting fragrances and because of the sweet undertones it's it's quite sweet um uh, but i absolutely love it Faiza is another scent that Ramon Monreal has that I absolutely love. And then one of his latest creations, Atratone Musk, which actually was featured on my fall video. Um, this is a true deer musk without having deer musk, at least to my nose. This is absolutely stunning. Um, it's, it has a natural feeling to it and it's very carnal, animalic. Um, I love it. I absolutely love this fragrance. Just number seven. I mean, because seriously, the other fragrances, fragrance brands that I have here, I mean, are a bit, um, are really a bit higher in terms of quality and some, not just in terms of quality, but in terms of history itself. Uh, so, I mean, it's why it's number seven, but honestly, it's a fragrance house that I highly advise you to check out. No, this was number seven. Number six might be a shock for you, but right now 
my sixth favorite brand is Hermes. Yes, Hermes just number six, quite harsh, but but it's not. <laughs> it's not just because Hermes is still a fantastic brand and it's still in my top six. I have a lot of fragrances with a lot of fragrance brands here and Hermes being number six spot is not bad at all. I love Hermes. Last year was the year of Hermes for me where I really discovered the Hermes fragrances, all of their collections. So and I will just mention three oh, fragrances that I have from them, but I have so many more fragrances from Hermes. Um, I will mention just these three. This is Cuir d'Ange, which is currently my favorite leather, actually. Uh, and it's, for now, the only Hermesense collect, uh, fragrance that I have. I hope to add Ambre Narguilé soon because I've been dying to have that fragrance for a while now. Uh, this is really probably my favorite Hermes, is Bellamy Vetiver a true modern Chypre with leather and a bit of spicy vetiver that it's just done to perfection. And also one of my favorite uh, old cologne style scents and it's part from the cologne range of Hermes which is Eau Citron Noir. Uh, and it's also a, a purchase of mine, a quite recent purchase of mine. Then they have the Un Jardin line, which I absolutely love. A very unique line. I have just two, Un Jardin sur le Nil and En Méditerranée, which was my first fragrance from um, Hermès from that line. Uh, so I have quite a few. Then you have Terre Hermès, of course. Even H24 is quite nice. Um, the original, the other toilets. Um, but well, that will be for another video. So as you see, I have and then you have the Eau de Merveille line, which is probably the most underrated designer line ever. Um, and I have like four or five fragrances from the Eau de Merveille. So you see, like, I love Hermes. I really do love. But when I will compare Hermes with other brands that I have here, I mean, I slightly prefer the other brands a bit more. But it's just because of my taste, just because... I love more heavy, uh, powerful, resinous fragrances. Um, so that's why, I mean, Hermes is just number six. One, it's personal taste. Any other, I mean, it's just as it stands. Who knows? Maybe when I will um, do an update video on my favorite brands, Hermes will be number one. I mean, everything can change, really. And still, Again, I love Hermes for his history, for its unique uh, fragrances. Um, really, it's a fragrance brand that everyone should uh, try, at least. It's not just Hermes, it's not just H24, it's really the whole range. Um, Jean-Claude Elona did a fantastic job rebranding Hermes. Um, and seriously, now I, I am skeptical with Christine Nagel, but I mean, she did a good job with, for example, this one, this Eau Citron Noir. I really do like this one. Not a big fan of Sur la Lagoon from the Jardin line. I think it's, it deviates from the trans green watery transparency that that line has. Uh, H24 Eau de Toilette, I'm a fan. I have to say I'm a fan. I don't have it yet, but I'm a fan of the Eau de Toilette. The Eau de Parfum, huge flop for me, huge. <laughs> but like, big age, huge. <laughs> but, um, and so I'm a bit skeptical in what will be the, the path of Hermes with Christine Agel. So far, I mean, okay, so far, okay. Um, but we will see. The in terms of Hermesence, I love Ambre Narguilé. Absolutely love that fragrance. Just like I love Épice Marine, a very unique aquatic spicy fragrance. It's basically Déclaration with aquatic undertones. Déclaration from Cartier. Um, so I'm a big fan of those. The, these three, I mean, the 
clear donge ombre narguilé and a pierce marine two fragrances that i have yet to add to my collection i mean are my top three favorite uh hermesens uh fragrances and then you have of course paprika brazil which is also nice um and you have a few others that now i don't I'm not remembering their names, but you have a few others that are, are also quite nice. But these three are my top three from Hermes. Um, so yeah, a massive fan, big fan of Hermes. Just number six, because, well, the other fragrances are more aligned with my taste. So this was number six. Number five is... Uh, what I have here from number five. Ah, yes. It's another brand that it's very underrated. It's very underrated. And again, maybe because of distribution, maybe uh, because it's not very readily available out there, especially in the online discounters, definitely it's not, uh, that I'm aware of at least. But it's, it's a brand uh, from uh, France and it's Hanya J. Kanye J number five, and again, this could easily be top three, but Kanye J number five, it's still solid. And it's above Hermes, and this is just personal taste. Just because Kanye J has this full, daring, bold uh, fragrances, very rich fragrances, with natural smelling qualities that I just love and the price tag it's not that expensive i mean for 50 ml retail price is 100 and i did 25 or 35 euros so i mean quite quite decent especially for the uniqueness quality i will show you the entire collection and hanya j it's another thing hanya j doesn't release fragrances every year um it's just from time to time it's when she's releasing uh, a perfume and that for me is a sign of quality. Um, and so I have here five fragrances, five fragrances. Uh, Kanye J has, I think it's either seven or eight fragrances in total. And I think she already, uh, this brand, I think, I think she created her brand like for, for a while now, almost a decade, if I'm not mistaken, if not even more. Um, and so she has, seven eight max perfumes that i am aware of um but i think it's seven because it's these five then you have jasmine uh jasmine something she has a fantastic chairman jasmine centric uh perfume amazing very indolic animalic it's amazing very underrated actually then she has another uh, one musk which out of all of them it's my least favorite it's it for me it was a flop because it doesn't smell like proper musk it's i think it's the most commercial fragrance from hanya j it's her musk scent um and i think that's about it so yeah seven if i'm not mistaken if i'm not mistaken she has just seven fragrances um and so the fragrances that i have is tia banero and i'm sorry if it's a bit dirty <laughs> Tia Banero, it's just, wow. This tobacco, it's breathtakingly amazing. So this is animalic, woodsy, with this natural smelling tobacco leaves. Oh, wow. Amazing, amazing fragrance here. Then you have Queer Andalou, which is, if you're a fan of Fahrenheit, you will love this one. This is a true gasoline petrol uh, black leather. Oh. And it's so good. It's really one of the most beautiful leather fragrances that I have. Um, then you have, of course, Ambre Loop, probably the most well known scent from Kanye J. And uh, this was featured on my fall list. A balsamic, gooey, syrupy, resinous, slightly animalic, also amber. So good. Uh, and then you have another one, which is one that I've been bathing <laughs> uh, with recently. It's Lavan 44. 
I mean, a beautiful lavender. Oh, it smells like pure lavender and green, quite green, it's a bit mossy. Oh, it's so good. It's really so good. Um, this is the easiest to like. This is pro this one and the musk that I'm. I keep forgetting the the last name, the full name of her musk uh, fragrance. So this one and her musk are the easiest to wear, the easiest to like. This one, much better quality. It's one of the best lavender fragrances in the game, in my opinion. All of these fragrances are, are Eau de Parfum. And last, but definitely not least, I have Oud Assam, which is my top three most favorite Oud fragrances ever. Uh, this smells like natural Oud. Uh, very spicy, very animalic, funky, the way that I love. <sighs> it's really... It's a masterpiece. Uh, Oud Assam is really for Oud lovers. It's a must-have. And so, I mean, Hanya J is really top five um, favorite brands. And it's really one of the best niche or indie brands out there. It's amazing. Now, number four. Uh, and th this, this was also very hard, but man, it, it, will, it will be Frederick Mal. Number four, Frederick Mal. Uh, I mean, Frederick Mal doesn't need really an introduction. Uh, it's, it's one of the best niche brands out there nowadays. Um, I have in total eight or nine uh, or seven. Oh my God, no, I don't know exactly how many fragrances I have from Frederick Mal, but it's around seven, eight uh, fragrances from Frederick Mal. And I'm a big fan of this house. Now, I don't love every single Frederick Mal. There are some fragrances that I feel redundant to have in my collection, some that I feel are a bit overpriced, and others that really don't work on my skin. For example, Lise Méditerranée was sad, because I was really sad, because it just didn't work on my skin. Uh, very, very floral, too floral for me, very pungent uh, to my taste. Um, you then have Cologne, a cologne in Delhi, in oh my god, I can't really know how to pronounce it, or nor even I do remember how exactly it is. Uh, but it's the cologne one, which also, I mean, I think it's not worth having. It's simply an old cologne style scent, which I, I think it's a bit overpriced. Um, so you have, I have a few that I or either I think it's overpriced or just don't work for me. And then you have Le Parfum de Thérèse, which is a, a cult follow type of scent, which for me, it's, yeah, it's nice. It's a really nice fragrance, but it's it's not a fragrance that I would personally wear. Um, but there are other fragrances that I would like to have, like Bigarat Concentré, which is, I mean, very inspired by Terre Lermes. After all, it was created by Jean-Claude Elena. And actually, it's a great replacement of the Terre d'Hermes au Très Fresh, which is now discontinued. So, I mean, if you want a closer smelling scent, I mean, go with Bigarat Concentré. It's more expensive, yes, but, well, a high quality orangey scent out there. Uh, which And it's one that I w I'm planning to add maybe next year. Another fragrance that I would love to have, maybe I would still have this year, it's Nuane Peace. It's not for everyone. Also has orange, like this orange peel. Very spicy, very heavy in the cinnamon. And it's also a bit creamy. Uh, I mean, it's, it smells like Christmas for me, actually, but it's not for everyone. Um, and I think it has a bit of cumin, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so it's, it's, it's a very unique scent. Let's put it like that. Very unique fragrance that I think it works, but not for everyone. Uh, and, and then there is fragrances that I absolutely love, and that's why I have them. Promise. Promise is fantastic. And actually, the the, the Desert Gems of Frederick Mal is something out of this world. Uh, overpriced a bit, I'll be honest, a bit overpriced. 
I mean, I would love to have the night. The night is probably my favorite from the the desert gems. I mean, the moon is nice, but it's very fruity, sweet. I mean, you have a lot of fragrances like that in the market. Dawn is also okay, um, but the night is the night is the perfume of uh, the desert gems, which is this very animalic funky bold oud full oud and i love it it's it's really fantastic it's a fantastic oud but it's overpriced i mean the 100 ml is over a thousand euros i mean insane and then you have promise which is the most affordable of the this desert gems collection which is in the 290 euros for a 100 ml if i'm not mistaken Promise, I love Promise also, it's my second favorite, actually, from this collection. And it has this beautiful green apple, and it's very heavy in the Nagamotha. So it's smoky, fruity, loud, it's, it's even hard to describe this fragrance, actually. Um, smoky, fruity at the same time, loud very loud very woodsy a bit animalic actually and it's fantastic i mean this fragrance is wonderful i love promise but it's not for the faint of heart and then you have in a completely different direction a masterpiece another one music for a while music for a while is the best pineapple accord that you will smell in a perfume. The very realistic, juicy, uh, sweet, very sweet uh, pineapple accord. And then you have this natural smelling lavender with this earthy patchouli in the base. I mean, this fragrance, just go try and, and try it for yourself. This was not Lorette's first sniff for me, but it's a glorious. It is glorious. And then you have the classics i mean mousse Cravageur and portrait of a lady portrait of a lady actually was my first frederick mal and i just purchased a 50 ml which i uh, regret <laughs> the all the others that i have are 100 ml i mean portrait of a lady is uh, it's a masterpiece in my opinion it set it a trend in uh, rose patchouli uh combos it's right wow very spicy, very spicy, peppery, a bit of cinnamon. I don't know if this has cinnamon, but I, I see a bit of cinnamon in here. Very heavy on a rose, this velvety red rose with an earthy patchouli. I mean, wow, to die for. It's, I mean, this is far from being a feminine leaning scent. I think this is strictly unisex. But honestly, I think this leans more to the masculine side. Very heavy fragrance. I, I love it. And then, of course, Mousse Cravageur, created by uh, Maurice Roussel in and released in the year 2000, which I think it was a year. It was a year of when uh, Frederic Mal was uh, launched uh, as a brand. And th this is amazing. Inspired, in my opinion, inspired by Chalimar or the Parfum from um, Guerlain. But because you feel here this animalic sweet vanilla, but it, it goes in a different territory where the Chalimar is orangey and it's less gourmandish. I mean, nowadays. Mousse Cravageur is much more gourmand because before it was very pissy. I still remember when I first tried the original formulation of Mousse Cravageur. Wow. So damn pissy. It, it was even insane. Now it's much tamed. Much, uh, now it's much more gourmand. It has this sweet, warm, spicy vanilla with this animalic, furry, musky undertones that, I mean, it's not as challenging as it once was, but it's perfect for me this this is perfect as it stands right now absolutely love this fragrance um it's it for me this is a must-have it's Mousse Cravageur from Frédéric Mal and 
many others I could mention, Geranium pour Monsieur, a perfect, the perfect mint scent, um, Vetiver Extraordinaire, my second favorite vetiver, uh, my, the first one I will mention in a, in a while. Uh, I have also, which one I have more? I have a couple of others. Now I'm a French lover, of course. Um, and I'm forgetting the other one that I have. Oh, well, <laughs> but again, Frederic Mal, amazing. Number four, um, still, it's one of the best niche brands out there, in my opinion. Now, number three. Da, 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 da. <laughs> uh, number three is an old love. It's a brand that pff, it's been with me for years. It's Amouage. I love Amouage and I'm not lately, I'm not been, I haven't been talking about this fragrance brand, um, but this brand deserves all the attention. I mean, I'm a bit afraid on the, also a bit skeptical on their direction, current direction, since Christopher Chong left Amouage, I mean, a couple of years ago. So I'm a bit afraid of their, their current direction because I see too many flankers. I see too many easy going, easy to like fragrances, which is fine. I mean, every brand need to have those. I mean, they need to, in the end, they are a company and they need to have profit. So it is what it is, but I'm seeing way too much of that. You know, I think they need it to have a, a balance just my opinion of course as a lover of amouage of their original releases um so, so i just have i will just show you a few i mean i have 10 i'll just show you a couple of them uh it's interlude man and memoir man which is so underrated so underrated i have also jubilation which i absolutely love uh, it's my favorite from Hamouage, actually. And then you have Goldman, which was their first release in the early 80s. Um, and you have, I mean, you have a lot. I have Journey, uh, Sunshine, you name it. Now, there is a line from Hamouage that I am, I feel that I'm sleeping on. It, uh, it's their woman's line. Um, I already tried last week. I tried Jubilation 25 for woman. I tried Epic Woman uh, and Lyric Woman. Those three need to be in my collection. <laughs> wow, wow. And it slipped on, really. Uh, it's just everyone just talks about the men's versions, but. Honestly, the women's are just as good, if not even better. Uh, Lyric Woman is a beautiful rose. Even, I would say, even more masculine than L Lyric Man, in my opinion. Uh, Jubilation 25 for women, it's a Chypre scent. And it's so full, full a full-bodied uh, Chypre. Uh, Epic Woman is this spicy woodsy green mid floral scent that it's so complex and it's so good uh, and then you have the opus line which is now redesigned um i love number six and number four which I, actually i don't have in my collection which i hope to add them soon so there is still quite a few amouage fragrances that i would love to have and that's saying a lot of this brand um so yeah amouage number three i mean really because they they just resonate with me the their scent DNA uh, for now just I identify myself with their uniqueness with their heavy incense woods which lately in a couple of years in this last couple of years I'm not being the biggest fan of Amouage because I, they tend to be more commercial and I again I see a lot of flankers but well, I still will give them the benefit of the doubt and they are still in my top three favorite brands. Now favorite brand number two <laughs> it's none other than 
Chanel. This year has been the year of Chanel for me. And really, uh, if it would not be for number one, number one brand, my favorite brand, Chanel would be my number one favorite brand right now. Uh, they're less exclusive. I mean, I will just show you a couple of them. I have four, so I'll just show you two. It's Boy, which it's my latest acquisition and I've been using this one. I mean, I've been bathing in Boy, <laughs> actually. Uh, and then you have my first less exclusive, actually, and it's the latest, it's Le Lyon, uh, released a couple of years ago. Um, I think it went worldwide just last year, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but these two, so good. Both created by Olivia Polch. Actually, this was the first fragrance created by Olivia Polch back in 2016. And this is his latest, latest creation. And it's the boldest, loudest fragrance from Chanel. Uh, but they're less exclusive. It's right now my favorite high-end designer line hands down and i still have a couple of them that i i'm eager to add to my collection uh queer de russie uh 1957 and 31 rue combo are three fragrances that i want to add to my collection uh one of them i will still add until the end of this year maybe it will be queer de russie uh it's a staple but these two wow this is a perfect signature scent perfect barbershop -y scent with some sparkly alahides very musky also and then you have lilion which is the complete opposite of that with this heavy labdanum animalic wow this is glorious lilion so smoky so good so intoxicating you can see the inspiration also of Chalimar. I see Chalimar more in Lyon than in Mousse but I, it's still in the league in its own. And then you have, I mean, this is my favorite green scent, Chanel number no. 19, Eau de Parfum. I have the also the Eau de Toilette and the Poudre version. Um, and then you have my favorite mainstream masculine scent, Egoist, Masterpiece this spicy, dry, floral scent. And you have this classic Pour Monsieur Eau de Toilette, which I actually, I purchased this one this year in uh, early summer. It's glorious, it's amazing. It's a simple scent. It's a fresh, cheaper fragrance, but it's done to perfection, released in the early 50s. And then you have the other fragrances that I, I I really do love. So you have this one, number five low. It's already one of my all time favorite fragrances from Chanel. The, the elegance, the elegant perfume for summer. And then, I mean, the best blue scent. Chanel was the, the brand that set the blue trend. And I'm a bit tired of it. And I'm very curious to see what Chanel will release in the mainstream men's line i mean it's been 10 years since bleu de chanel although this is the eau de parfum which for me is the best is the best uh version of bleu the other toilet is a bit too citrusy and light the parfum it it feels like an incomplete scent i think it goes directly to the base and not don't have you don't see the top middle and base you just go right away to the base this a very heavy creamy sandalwood with some if that makes sense blue undertones so for me this is the most balanced uh version of blue in my opinion you have the citruses the incense and the sandalwood and it's very well balanced um and it's the best blue scent in my opinion although you can go with either uh I think if you want to go, you, first of all, you just need one blue scent. I always said that. Uh, Rich, Rich Mitch, love you, buddy. Uh, also says that you just need one blue scent, and it's it's really. Um, I I really agree with that. Uh, 
you have so many blue fragrances out there and uh, it's, it's worthless to collect them all. Uh, just go with one and Bleu, Bleu de Chanel in general is the best. It's the most well-balanced, better ingredients, better blend when compared with the other man. It's, it's really great. I mean, yeah, it, it deviates from the Chanel aesthetic, but it's, it's needed. You know, this br the brands, the more older brands need to modernize themselves, need to have more, need to be up with the trends. You know, they need to adapt to the current trend, to the current world, how we think, how we live, uh, what are our current tastes uh, as a society, for better or for worse. I mean, the brands just need to adapt to that and I can't really blame them. It's just then how they do that. I mean, you can't, you can't have like a, a blue wine, no worries. But I mean, you can also have a couple of fragrances, new releases that are you know, respecting your history as a brand uh, and people who love the brand will resonate with. Uh, I mean, I would love that Chanel would release like a scent like Egoist to the modern times. That will not happen. I highly doubt that that would happen. Uh, I also have Entails. I'm team Entails. I absolutely love that scent. Um, so yeah, I mean, I love Chanel. Um, and it was thanks to Eugene, actually. Eugene is the one that is always talking about Chanel. And uh, this year I decided, well, let's give a try. And so happy that I did. I'm in love with this brand, really. They can't do anything wrong, really. And it's a brand that, again, it, it deviates from my taste because I prefer, again, more loud, bold, uh, Middle Eastern style scents. But Chanel is completely opposite and I love it. I absolutely love it. Uh, they do French perfumery at its finest. And with that being said, my number one, <laughs> no surprises here whatsoever. If you are following this channel for a while, of course, Profumo Roma. Uh, but I have to say, I have 14 fragrances from Profumo Roma and I still want to have some more. <laughs> Profumo Broma is in this game since the 90s, actually. And it's a brand that it's, I would say, maybe underrated. I don't, I don't know if it's underrated or not very appreciated, but well, it's semantics. I would say just underrated, um, but it's maybe because of the distribution it's not readily available and it's not in the discounter so i mean uh they are very hard to find in your local perfume stores so i understand why people are not talking about these fragrances, and they are still expensive especially now with the price increasing i mean they are more expensive but they are completely worth it in my opinion uh I, these are just 100 ml they also sell the and the bottles, the 18 ml, which goes for, I think nowadays, maybe 80 something euros or 90 euros. But I mean, but I love this brand. I have Yambrao de Patchouli. I mean, I think probably their best, their, their two best fragrances, uh, but it's hard to say that. <laughs> when I start to think in Olibanum and Santalum and Orangea, but it's well, very different scents. But I love it. Th this is my favorite amber. This is my favorite patchouli. Um, this is my favorite aquatic aqua di sale. I mean, <laughs> so they have a lot of fantastic scents. And Profumo Broma, it's if they are very linear. They will not change from the top, from uh, their the heart, from the base. I mean. What you get in the top is what you will get in the in the end. So uh, that for me works just fine. I don't have any complaints because I love them from first sniff. Uh, and w the thing that they have is this natural feel. Uh, they are extra de parfum. They are highly concentrated, and they all of them, or at least the majority, let's say the majority of them, have this natural feel. 
it's absolutely fantastic they really set like as soon as you smell them you have an image or you you just go wow a perfume can smell like this so aqua di sale smells like pure ocean water uh, patchouli it smells like a natural patchouli it's earthy it's resinous it's bold it, it's just wonderful amber aurea beautiful ambergris with labdanum i mean this is breathtakingly amazing and i want to share with you the first fragrance that i got from profumo broma was fiore d'ambra now this is the most original amber and i will just shut down because i think this video is already way too long <laughs> i think this i feel that i'm in the live stream almost <laughs> uh, but it's just me talking um but fiore d'ambra is this narcotic resinous gooey syrupy amber wow because you whew, you have opium in here <laughs> so you have this opium accord uh, a bit of a hint of saffron and this gooey sweet resinous amber wow it's wonderful it's really wonderful and so i mean profumo broma is it's magic in a bottle uh they really captivate the scent that they want to transmit for example lemon aqua viva best lemon in the game best lemon it's very realistic long lasting and that's another thing that they have it's the performance is great um so aqua viva best lemon realistic squeezed lemon <laughs> uh olibanum one of the best incense out there a pure frankincense perfume ichnusa fig leaves it's pure fig leaf fig and fig leaves um then you have Santalum, this dry, spicy, very dry and spicy uh, sandalwood. Um, I mean, and others. Then I have the Note de Profumo with Amante and... Uh, uh, now I'm forgetting the name. <laughs> which is this cedarwood, a powdery cedarwood. It's a very unique scent. Um, so yeah, I mean, I love Profumo Broma. They because they really captivate a specific scent and they perfected it. It's wonderful. It's a wonderful brand. Um, and so, yeah, th these are my current seven favorite perfume brands. Um, I have two honorable mentions uh, before finishing this video, Guerlain and Tom Ford. Why honorable mentions? Although I have quite a few Tom Fords, I also have a lot of Guerlain why and also Sergeov. i will include Sergeov in my honorable mention because i have also dozens of uh, Sergeov. why i'm just including them as an honorable honorable mention guerlain tom ford and Serge all from for the same reason i have not been impressed by these brands lately their latest releases in this last two three years guerlain three four Tom Ford the same, although a Ben Fumé is not that bad. A Ben Fumé is not that bad. Uh, but really, Tom Ford, Guerlain, the last three, four years, I haven't seen them, really. Uh, Sergeoff, maybe in the last three years, two to three years, I mean. Plus, I've not been in the, in the Sergeoff mode for a while, although they have fantastic sense. I, I love Sergeoff. Uh, actually but uh, lately I've not been impressed by their latest releases nor I've been in the mood to wear Sergio for some reason I mean don't ask me why but but well these th this is basically the reason why I'm just including them these brands as honorable mention because while they have fantastic some of the best perfumes ever done in their portfolio but and, and, and it, they, they are still brands that I suggest you to try them if you have yet to. Because again, I mean, the, the heritage of Guerlain, the uh, private blend of Tom Ford, and even the signature line is amazing. Sergeoff also has fantastic scents from the shooting stars for the Oud collection. 
I mean, might be overpriced. Yes, no. I mean, yeah, I understand that topic, but I still think that Sergio has fantastic sense. Um, so in the end, all of these three brands are great, but they kind of fell off my favorite of being my favorite brands. Um, so yeah, this is all I get. For, I have for you today. Tell me in the comments down below what are your favorite perfume brands, designer and niche. Tell me also what are some of your favorite fragrances from those brands. And I'm sorry guys if this was already a too long video, but well, I love to talk about perfume. And if you are here still listening, thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, guys, see you in the next video.